जस्ट फॉर फन और आई थिंक मुझे कुछ बड़ा करना है लाइफ में एंड मैं कुछ अच्छा आइडिया सोचता हूँ एंड फिर मैं बनाऊंगा एंड फिर बहुत सक्सेसफुल होगा लाइक दैट इज अ जनरल वाइब एंड ऑनेस्टली द चांसेस ऑफ दैट हैपनिंग आर रियली लो एंटिल हाउ मच डिड यू गॉट इट क्वाइट फॉर आई गॉट आई हैव अ ग्रेट आइडिया लाइक यू नो टीन एजर्स लाइक मी वी लव मेकिंग दिस कॉट बॉल लाइक फॉर यू एस कैनेडा कस्टमर्स पे एटी टाइम्स मोर फॉर यूरोप कस्टमर्स पे एटी टाइम्स मोर then um, what amazon pays for the same thing yeah there are only few software engineers and coders in the world jo kehte hain ki they want to become a programmer not because of money but because of their innate passion and especially dravya at the age of like as a teenager building stuff and how big of a passionate he is of coding building stuff indie hacking was fascinating and he is the kind of person i was dying to meet and i finally was able to use my networking skills from the last podcast where i featured the founder of mem0 which was used by dravya in his journey we will be breaking all of this down and now to network you need networking skills beyond especially with mint mobile because this mobile network in us gives you everything unlimited starting at 15 dollars per month and especially for travelers like me whether i go to india us canada mexico i have international roaming in my pocket at all time check out mint mobile by going to mintmobile.com/thing and get your deal immediately So hello everyone today we have the OG 18 year old programmer who is an indie hacker इन्होंने सबसे पहले कमिंग टू द यूएस पेइंग हिज ट्यूशन फी ऑन हिज ओन दैट आल्सो फॉर अंडर ग्रेजुएट डिग्री एट एएसयू प्लस ही इज द फाउंडर सिंस द एज ऑफ 16 बिल्डिंग स्टफ एंड मेकिंग मनी थ्रू इट ऑन टॉप ऑफ दैट करेंटली ही हैज मेड अ प्रोडक्ट कॉल्ड सुपर मेमोरी व्हिच आई पर्सनली यूज एज़ वेल व्हिच हैज 30000 प्लस यूजर्स ही अप्लाइड फॉर वाईसी एंड one day he will get accepted as well <laughs> for sure and he first of all introduced me to the world of engineers how he is connected to so many stanford engineers he is in this community of software developers who care about a cause and build for not just fun to make it spread across the world and to monetize those skills so hi dravya can you please introduce yourself hi guys um so yeah like that was a huge exaggeration of <laughs> 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 but basically um i am i like building products and um i like to like tell people that i build products so that's me awesome sabse pehle yaar aap batao what inspired you to become a programmer what age you were inspired and who inspired you um so i have been very active on like internet youtube actually um i was making videos like on this platform called dub smash before like kuch tha nahi like tiktok bhi nahi tha tabhi and i i used to make videos on dub smash with my brother so uh, i had this ipad and like throughout having that ipad i used to play every single game i used to be you watch a lot of youtube videos and eventually like i started watching videos of game developers which kind of made my mind in that direction that main jo game khelta hu wo banai bhi jati hai like वो भी सही चीज है राइट लाइक आई कैन ऑल्सो मेक दैम एंड देन लाइक एट सिक्सटीन लॉकडाउन हिट आई डि नॉट डू एनी थिंग थ्रू आउट द लॉकडाउन आई वॉज इज यू नो प्लेइंग माइंड क्राफ्ट फॉर सिक्सटीन आवर्स अ डे बट आई वॉज एक्चुअली लाइक प्लेइंग माइंड क्राफ्ट एंड लर्निंग अबाउट कंप्यूटर्स थ्रू माइंड क्राफ्ट लाइक आई वुड मेक माई ओन कंप्यूटर्स इन माइंड क्राफ्ट बेसिकली लाइक यू कैन डू दैट विद दैट स्टोन एंड अदर एक्सपेरिमेंट्स एंड देन Uh, after that i was like i'm playing all day i should probably do something in life so i started learning python and like i just saw this uh, programming with more tutorial uh, sab dikhta hai wo 15 million views it, uh-huh. i think it has like 20 million views yeah yeah and uh, that's all you need to like get started so i was the most popular video about python try to make a couple products for like my mom and uh, myself and yeah so like that's basically how it all started what products you made at the time so my f- very first thing um so yes i w- i was writing this blog called smart back then in 2020 1 end of 2020 so um like while writing blog that blog i would download a bunch of images and like text and stuff like that so i wanted it to be organized into folders and stuff like that like it, w- it should automatically go to my blog folder mm-hmm. so it was literally a listener to a folder like if 
like for loop if number of files in this folder is greater than one then if type is pdf this move to this folder image move to this folder it was that simple um and like that was the first one and then my i showed that to my mom and then my mom was once talking about this issue that she had um so she's a numerologist and she had some numbers calculation thing and it was very programmatic like you can just do that programmatically so i made a numerology call calculator for her basically incredible to everyone watching we met today at next year's conference jahan pe 16 to 18 year old founders were there developers were there and they are impacting the whole world with their work with their coding skills so there was a tweet we saw by sahil lavinia thanks to ai product designers will convert to brand designer front end engineers will convert to design engineers customer support will convert to support engineer and software engineers will become system engineers do you agree with it that is a beautiful statement honestly and um, like sam altman has a saying that there will be very soon there will be 1 person billion dollar companies and like that tweet you know like um and a person can be all of these thing things and then it they can be all of these things as well so you are eight things in one basically and like it, you can use ai to make it even better so yeah like one person billion dollar companies are going to happen and <laughs> that's the reason like aap bhi like you have created your ai product so let's just start start with the product you're making so can you please give us a demo of super memory first um so basically super memory is this platform where um like just a little bit of an intro it is a platform where you can import your tweets and bookmarks and notes from multiple different platforms bring them to one single platform that helps you find them talk to them arrange them into spaces and categories and also recommends you based on context so um Yeah so this is like the landing page for Superman thing it's a very cool one we got number one product of the day um when we launched on product hunt um we got 30000 users and 8000 active ones since a while now it's not growing that much but more about that soon um and yeah so we also have an extension it's completely open source So yeah, I just move to the demo. And you got first of all, it has so much use case. Currently, many coders are learning on TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube, on Twitter, LinkedIn. There is also Pinterest. Sometimes yes. people learn from, and there are numerous apps people Absolutely. are learning from. Yeah. And it is really difficult to manage those notes. Yeah. Now you can send everything, all the bookmarks, at one place. AI categorizes it yeah. thanks to super memory it has competitors too jin jo log dekh rahe hain unko bata do it has competitors too but not a single competitor is free and not a single competitor has that many features what yes. dravya has added okay let's get into the product so anyways um like i'll show you like how to import bookmarks first i guess that's the natural progression of things you'll join super memory sign in you'll have to import them Uh -huh. So thankfully like um I have made a bunch of importers so this is the twitter bookmark importer you just click this button and it will get all the twitter bookmarks and it'll try to sync it whenever it can uh the next time you add more uh -huh. and then like your super memory page will look like this and wow. trust me I have like uh. I have like a shit ton of bookmarks like um I have a lot of them like uh. I I had to delete all of them for testing before but I have uh over 2000 bookmarks really? on twitter i mean i'm building this for a reason right <laughs> um and so i can go to like the home page and i can be like uh oh look at that how does next year subtract so it gave me next year suggestions from the bookmarks why so and why are these suggestions so specific like let's see um let's see why this is a very specific question uh -huh. um i try to uh, the internet is slow here i guess and it will go research it will find out like all the tweets about it and it will show me like uh, the answer to that que spe very specific question right so it gave me suggestions and then i asked that suggested question and it uh, it gave me like all these things and why did it give that suggestion because it, it like kind of knows that i am next js developer and everything like that right that's really cool in my opinion um because it kind of learns about 
you as you go and then you can just ask your own question as well like it doesn't have to be a suggested one like i can be like um is there anything i know about a developer who created um dumping ground or something like it can be a very abstract question and um if i have oh look at that like if you have a bookmark it will show you exactly like it that's shows cool the entire context of that bookmark yeah yeah that's cool right so i i have mentioned about one of my earlier products called dumb dot place uh-huh. um and it kind of reference that so insane so if i have to guess right now how it works let me first guess and you can correct me yeah right? sure so i think it uses rag yes to convert the whole database into you know vector database mm-hmm. and you can search through it mm-hmm. that's what i think Perfect. but at the same time uh, there is some memory layer mm-hmm. using mem0 because i did a podcast on mem0 that's zero. right that remembers everything yes. so mem0 is important because jo bhi aapne llm ko feed kiya hai it can forget it can forget dravya is 18 yes. years old and all that now it remembers your age it remembers everything thanks to that so yes. i th- i personally think it is combination of these two technologies um that's true <laughs> and you might know that also from our github because it is also open source and we do use mem0 but for a different reason so uh-huh. the reason is to understand like your preferences like uh this guy likes these things right like uh if i if i the user say the website dravya.dev it will be like this user saw dravya on the internet and he looks at developers websites so kind of like that so that's the memory layer and um the entire architecture everything is actually open source right now oh you can just look at it like it's right there this is it right incredible um so it's not that complex um some of it is not open source the new stuff but that's for obvious reasons um but anyone could build this as long as they can figure out how to keep it cheap ah so that's the hard part and you are so brutally honest ki anyone can build this yes of course okay so now let's get to know about the technologies because at the next year's conference dravya has become the brand ambassador of cloudflare <laughs> so in his podcast last podcast with ishan you mentioned that you pay 5 dollars a month to yes. cloudflare and they handle up to 2 million of requests yes. for every single time someone wants to you know let's say ask about tweet tweets yes. in the bookmarks about notion bookmarks or uh, you know google chrome book bookmarks or even linkedin bookmarks everything they want they can ask so why cloudflare is this cheap and why you recommend everyone to use cloudflare um my honest take about cloudflare is that it's extremely hard to build good products in general right like uh, a lot of people do it on virtual private servers a lot of people use vercel and uh, a lot of people use other uh, platforms so the platform itself doesn't matter how your your product matters right like your users matter and for me personally i uh, love cloudflare because it abstracts away a lot of the things that you would spend a lot of time thinking about right mm-hmm. um for example like um cloudflare has workers which is serverless functions it's like lambda functions of aws in workers you can use something called bindings so bindings are basically you can do nv dot wait, wait can database. you visualize can you open actually, it actually i can just open the code like okay, um yeah. Yeah. that's very easy like um yeah meantime let me give context to people so aaj like in at next year also sahil lavinia gave context that you should make serverless applications exactly because making an application with a server is like taking a bus to coffee coffee shop where you just need even like a skateboard so taking extra stuff where you don't need so you should try to start serverless you can just make api requests and make simplest applications are possible yep. without taking bus to the coffee shop just take your skateboard bicycle or all yep so um look at this so this this is like i'm sending stuff to a queue uh-huh. and queues are honestly a pain in the ass to implement in any infrastructure but also like how you do it matters for user experience and stuff like that so if uh, workers are like short running uh, processes right 
if I send a request, it'll do something and in some 10, 15, 20 milliseconds, it'll return something. Uh -huh. It's a short process. But how do you do a long running process? Like, how do I vectorize something like, uh, save it to mem0, 10 different things, and make the user think that it's really fast? You know, so that's when queues come in. So that's, I have a queue, but look at how the beauty of how I do this queue, like c dot q dot send, literally, mm -hmm. nv dot q dot send. If I want a database, I can just do nv dot database. If I want AI, I can do nv dot AI. Mm -hmm. It's literally, that's it. Like everything is built into nv environment as bindings. Like uh, if you want object storage, like S3 in AWS, mm -hmm. uh, they have something called R2, which is actually cheaper. So you can just do c dot r2 dot store this object or store this image. Um, there's basically everything, which is honestly perfect. Like your, this is my vector database, vector database dot query. That's it. So that's how you query into your whole database. Yeah, um, it's it's literally that simple. Um, that's why it helps us ship faster. It helps us keep the product secure and fast at the same time. That's why. Okay, so now to reach this far, to have that tech stack, to have that knowledge, how did you reach this point? Tell, tell us about the products you have made, which succeeded, which failed, because currently like, you know, a lot of 16 to 20 year old coming to the US are coming on Z Fellowship, Thiel Fellowship, Peter Thiel, we all know who funded Facebook, PayPal, so many startups. So, you know, these VCs are actually giving money to 16 to 18 year old so that they can study for free in the US, build companies. And that also tells you like the value of college education right now, because uh, like, you know, college education value has gone down. That's time. true. Okay. So I'll let you go ahead. All right. So, um, like my website is not updated since a while. I'll be honest, uh -huh. but on the website, there's a lot of, uh, old projects of mine that I might have forgotten. So anyways, um, my first big project was this one called Spacebot. And uh, it is also open source. Um, I have been doing open source since my very first big project. It was a Discord bot that got sued by YouTube, Spotify, and I think a whole bunch of companies. So I had to shut it down. Um, and it was got expensive to run as well. But it was very interesting because I was 16 years old. Wow. Um, and because of Spacebot. So Spacebot was a multi-purpose bot. Wait, wait, let's consider the use case. So first yep. bot was a Discord bot. Which uses, like, what, describe what it uses it's, Spotify and YouTube for. Um, so it's a Discord board that uh, could stream music. So you and your friends can join a voice channel and you can be like, hey, play this song and then it will find the song wherever it can and then it will stream it from Spotify or Discord for free without ads. Okay. Um, that. Okay, let's get to know your intent. So what was the intention? Like was you, were you, were you making projects for fun or you had some cause in mind? Yes. So my intent was that I was actually running a lot of, uh, teenager YouTube, uh, teenager Discord servers. Uh -huh. Like, um, I was running this one called teenagers, but normal. Uh, -huh. uh, uh I was one of the lead moderators for r slash teenagers. Uh -huh. So like r slash teenagers is like huge, right? Like as a Discord server as well. So, I was like, these people use these bots right now. I think I can make a better one. Mm. That's why I was like, let's do it. And I, I was new to coding, so I was finding projects projects to make as well. And Discord bots seemed like something I can do that people I know will use instantly. And that's why I was like, I should do this. And you saw the problem too, right? You know, yeah. in, in bots, people scam a lot. You know, when things are free, so many WhatsApps, yeah. spams we see, uh, you know, so many spam messages we see. And at that time, there was no automation for Discord spam detection. Yeah. And you wanted to make that possible too. Yes, actually. So, um, like our server, like the teenager server had this issue where like if two people had a fight, um, they would start cursing at each other and then like, emoji spam and then huge blocks of text and like there were uh, random people do random things to destroy the server like 50 people would join and they would just do random shit and like we did not wa want that of course so i was kind of forced to build an auto moderator and that auto moderator basically like 
back then there was no gpt api or anything so it used like semantics it would store every single message in the database it would use like semantics to figure out um what to block and what to not block and um natural the, language processing basically. yeah just not natural language processing nlp it is also uh open source i'm actually just going through the code right now it's not that much it's like very simple okay. it was like one of my first projects so like of course it was not hard but it was pretty cool and no one had done that much stuff before so um and it also had some games um it had like ticket system like you know um in like events and conferences especially online events you want like support right so you can like uh please get support and a private channel will be created and then you, only you and the organizers will be there in it mm-hmm. it like um a lot of cool stuff was there in the bot like um yeah i loved it and to host the discord bot i also started this thing um a service like i reached out to a friend who who already had a server and i was like hey i have a great idea like you know teenagers like me we love making discord bots and i had a small community of friends in the teenager server who also started making discord bots and they wanted to host it as well and i was running it on my own laptop all night like i i had to keep my laptop plugged in and it because it was like supposed to be only for one server and i i did not even have this concept of servers in mind and stuff like that um i reached out to this guy he had like a vps i convinced him to put my bot on the vps and i convinced him let's start a startup that like kind of helps everyone to host their bots so know? vps is virtual private server yes a vps is a virtual private server where you can put your code and run it mm. and then you can close your laptop you can do whatever with your laptop the code is no longer running on a laptop it's running on the cloud okay. basically it's a cloud vps yes okay um so I I wanted a cloud VPS service myself but I did not like I want don't want I didn't want to pay for it because like where would I get the money how would I pay in dollars a lot of questions like that luckily my friend said yes so we started this thing called epic host oh hosting uh, a hosting company that fun fact hosted for free actually so really uh, yes we had like a very generous free tier just because i really wanted teenagers like me like because i wanted it for free so i was like uh no one else like people like me probably just want like a small server to put their discord bots on and it's also i really think that discord bots are a great way to learn and get into coding mm. and it is it is creating a real impact like i could see it in my own life um i, I was like blogging about everything and i started blog i was blogging back then so uh-huh. that's the reason that i made this uh, and look at this like our entire support our entire customer even the sign up and getting the server part everything was through a discord bot that i made basically like look at this wow you literally would account sign up check your dms like no login nothing and then buy and then you just get your server wow <laughs> so just like a chat bot you yeah. created a chat bot before even chat gpt was there Yeah uh no it, so this one was just commands honestly and then we made uh, like this thing like an entire um like browser experience where you can see the console logs and then like ip address of the server and a lot of details about it so you know like i now i like to call it the vercel for vps you know like mm. in reality it was like vercel for running like python and any long running session code instantly deploy basically instant deploy uh-huh. um through a discord bot out of anything uh because all my customers were on discord why why would i ask them to log in with google so yeah to give some context like you know for even big websites like sahil's gum road website you know it has like it has added a trillion dollar to create an economy that website gum road it's like graphy ya fir riggy of india so that website needs 15 macbook pros to run so you don't need that many vps or that many virtual private servers exactly. in the cloud exactly so how much it costed you personally when you were giving it to it when you were giving it for free so it did not cost me anything because oh. i had a very interesting business uh, like me personally it did not cost anything ryan already owned the server and then we got people like because we rose to 5000 free users 
and out of those 5000 free users some of their uh, like own bots grew and um, there's some extremely popular bots that were part of those 5000 bots right like of course so uh, because they grew and if they could afford a server they would get a server and they would like basically donate a server to epic host because we were the ones that supported them when they started right ah. and that way we had uh, so it's crazy like we had multiple servers around the world um and very very beefy servers and we had this entire directory of all the servers we had wow. and then we made like a load balancing thing that kind of balances like where the requests go based on where your users are kind of thing so uh, that was a very fun experience and i never made any money through it i think i made like 200 400 dollars something like that and then some more money when it got acquired um we also started like a pay tier uh and we started giving like larger portions of these servers to people on that paid tier um so that that's what, that was like the story of epicos and then yes i had to sell it off because i had my 10th exams coming up or yes 10th exams coming up uh not 10 some exam coming up i don't remember <laughs> um and like my co-founder had his gre coming up Mm-hmm. and everyone had some exam coming up so everyone was like hey i cannot do this server anymore i'll have to shut it down and um so we were like all right it's a good time uh, and we had some people who wanted to buy us because we were actually a very good name in this particular like spectrum of technology like we we, we were probably the only ones who did like everything through discord honestly so really? like uh, our competitors who wanted to get the discord bot developer market really like they were like we should buy this company and they bought us so wow how much did you got acquired for uh so ryan got more than uh like 10000 12000 and i got very less out of it because um everything that compute was with space bot growing to 200000 was included in that um I did get quite a bit but yes like about 4000 so that was good. Okay, what was the next venture after this? Um so <laughs> so so far space bot and then I just made like a bunch of like random websites like Audium which was like Twitter for podcasts. Mm. Um like micro podcasts, you know like how there's micro blogs. Ji. I made it as a hackathon project. There's this image which I love. This is just a random open source thing that i made it can convert any image to unlimited um among us characters ah But why because i just thought it would that would be kind of fun interesting so, look there's mona lisa and then there's mona lisa made up of among us characters <laughs> oh which characters are these among us acha among us okay wow it's so this is a joke project and uh-huh. um, i just liked it and like I just build stuff for the fun of it. Doesn't have to be serious all the time. Uh huh. And then Moxie Chat, which was for my first GoLang project, uh, also for a hackathon, which I won. Then there's Learn. dot cc. Um, and then I was working at Comnet. Um, I made like a mobile app for Comnet. That was my first mobile app. Then Siri GPT, which is so, so that is when the Chat GPT API came out. Oh, for Siri to integrate. No, Siri. like. Chat GPT API, like there was GPT three, Chat GPT, and then it was it was made into an API, right? Yeah. So I was like, what if I could talk to Chat GPT using Siri? Oh, okay. So, so when when Siri shortcuts did not have that support, you were already into it. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, and no one was building that many Chat GPT apps as well. Um, so I was like, let's try this. <laughs> and this was my first paid product like uh, a a true saas product you know like selling software in like not actual server space but software so first business to sell something yes and um, so it it was it had a really cool landing page like really cool animation Beautiful. i did a product hunt launch and got a lot of traction on product hunt um how much I th- I think it was like product of the day four or five or something. Wow! Because I was not that popular at the time. I had like two hundred followers. So oh, wow! Of course, <laughs> um, and it also you can buy it online for five dollars. Uh, it was fifteen, and then I made it five, and some people bought it. It was fun, and one of the people who bought it had a Mac dot com email address, 
which was interesting. So I emailed them, and they were from Apple. So wow. that was pretty cool as well. <laughs> uh, it was really fun to talk to him, and he was like. I've never thought that we could do this. Yeah, you reached out to Apple <laughs> without reaching out to them. Yeah, like he he bought my product and he worked at Apple. Amazing. Okay, now when you were building these, we need to cl- clarify, right? Your intent was what was the why in your mind? That I will start this current startups karo, just for fun or for I like think uh, the current like people right now think too much and they are like. मुझे कुछ बड़ा करना है लाइफ में एंड मैं कुछ अच्छा आइडिया सोचता हूँ एंड फिर मैं बनाऊंगा एंड फिर बहुत सक्सेसफुल होगा लाइक दैट इज अ जनरल वाइब एंड ऑनेस्टली द चांसेस ऑफ दैट हैपनिंग आर रियली लो अंटिल यू हैव ट्राइड अ हंड्रेड डिफरेंट थिंग्स एंड देन यू हैव कन्वेक्शन लाइक इफ यू योर एन आइडिया यू लाइक ओके दिस वन विल प्रॉब्ली डू रियली वेल बिकॉज पीपल वॉन्ट दिस बट एसेंशियली वॉट यू नीड टू डू इज मेक समथिंग पीपल वॉन्ट and make something you will enjoy building two simple requirements right and get it fixed as per the feedback you get on twitter on yes. social media yes. and same indie same indie hacking formula is followed by the ogs in this industry those og indie hackers are peter levels who makes almost 3 million dollars a year just with hacking one person with zero employees that's crazy and then mark luwon right yes mark, mark luwon so the problem here i see is ki jo peter levels कहता है लाइक यू नो ही इज बिन डूइंग फ्रॉम लाइक 13 इयर्स ही स्टार्टेड एट द एज ऑफ 27 सो दे आर द इंस्पिरेशन फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस इंडी हैकर्स सो अब ये बताना ही टेल्स दैट ही बिलीव्स पीएचपी एंड वनिला जावास्क्रिप्ट आर इनफ टू लॉन्च समथिंग एंड देन मेक समथिंग शिटी एंड लेस शिटी जो आपने बोला था राइट बट डू यू थिंक देयर इज वैल्यू ऑफ फ्रेमवर्क्स एज पर पीटर लेवल्स ही सेज दैट कि यार फ्रेमवर्क्स पे ध्यान ही नहीं देना चाहिए यू शुड जस्ट शिप समथिंग मेक वेब ऐप इट्स इजीयर टू फिक्स बग्स व्हाट इज योर ओपिनियन ऑन दैट um these frameworks update hote rehte for example uh, node 15 comes like next year 15 16 comes and yes. they may not have backwards compatibility aapko compatible karna hai you have to spend yes, hours in making true. compatible yeah so tell um okay so he has a point uh-huh. and his point is don't run after shiny new things that's a very good point and i completely agree with that because if you run out of after shiny new things you're not never really building stuff but like the reason that nextjs updates and the very fact that nextjs has so, so many updates it's a good thing right like if you're on next 13 if you're on next 12 you don't need to update to next 15 uh, or 16 mm-hmm. that just released today um you don't need to update it it will still work like unless you want the next shiny new thing that's where the problem arises right um a lot of developers try to like get this tunnel vision of tech right like i want to use the best tech i want to write, write the best code but in reality what you need to do is you need to make something users want there's extremely old websites like recently there was one that people were talking about a lot it's called macmaster um so macmaster i'll actually open it right now uh huh uh so this is a website made in 2006 or 7 or something uh-huh. and i just want to you to check out how fast this is oh wow so it is like an extremely fast fast website like it is crazy and how do you think they are doing that like they are um they are not using any frameworks okay but they are actually still using the best tech like the shiniest tech that was available at the time but at the same time extremely obsessed about making something people want so like um you can have best of both both worlds right you can do both things as long as you don't have tunnel vision into just focusing on the tech stuff of your complexity like um there is this famous quote by raj ji like gudarmo raj uh, it's something the ceo of versal by the, the way the ceo of versal and creator of next js uh-huh. socketio lot of cool stuff uh-huh. and it's that iteration velocity is the best thing uh that leads to a broader success basically mm. and that's why frameworks iterate and that's a good thing so 
I mean, I totally agree with you. Uh, there are pros and cons, right? Like the good thing is कि आपको कभी copy नहीं करना चाहिए. Like okay, okay. For, first of all, I really wanted to show you this thing. So I show you the MacMaster website, right? Uh-huh, sure. So Next.js made the same thing on Next.js. Really? So they they demonstrated that you can make the same speed website on Next.js, and that website has two thousand parts. This one has a million parts. So it doesn't matter what you use. Exactly, it But doesn't matter. What about backwards compatibility? Like update at that? Are you forced to update or you don't forced to? No, usually it is not like a phone update or a laptop update. <laughs> um, it's like it's versions. It's like some. It's like a semver versioning. If you heard about it, there's like thirteen point five point six, for example. Um, if you are on 13.5.6, you can safely upgrade to 13.9.9, but when you update to 14, it's not a guarantee that everything will work exactly the same way. So you don't need to, as long as you know the features you want are in one version, you're good to go for rest of life. Yes, <laughs> and I think that is something people take it just blindly. They just trust that beta levels are gone. That Just use PHP and yes. you know uh, because PHP is seventy eight percent of the internet. Just use that and vanilla JavaScript. Yes. You should be good. Blindly follow me, Ganache, and they are getting hate for it too. Yes. Because uh, I think you know, let's say you want to prevent some attacks. There is something called you mentioned cross site scripting. scripting. Yes. So till last month, you mentioned in GitHub as well, cross site scripting was possible. Yes, you put crazy. a code in GitHub's README, it yes. will be executed somewhere. Yes. You put a code in a form, it can be executed. Next year, and these libraries prevent that, but PHP may you have to use from scratch mechanism to prevent that. Yeah, exactly. Like you can ship um, vulnerabilities in the best or the worst websites, and that's always going to happen. Like. Um, I personally think that level levels IOs products are multi-pagers. They are they are not extremely complex, you know, like systems. Um, levels IO simply has this amazing skill of making something people want and keeping it simple for himself to make it, you know. And that's a one hell of a skill. But usually apps are complex, like web apps are complex. Um, for example, my own website. Uh, when I play a song, it will show up here. Like it will literally show up as now playing this, and this much of the song is done. Uh-huh. Literally, um, and doing all of that stuff. So that uses a lot of cool stuff. Like it has pre-rendering, it has a lot of cool stuff. Doing that in PHP is possible, but it would require a lot of plumbing. Like um, and a lot of code that Next.js just gives you. You know, so. So it's it's about use something that is easier for you to make. Exactly. Well, it could be PHP if you know well. It exactly. could be next year. Just make it and ship it fast. Exactly. Make something people want and do it fast. Exactly. So, so okay, now let's move on to the future of uh, frameworks. So you covered a lot of it. Key versions update होते हैं. You don't need to like you know constantly update them. So what advice you would give? To someone who wants to start in web development frameworks, and what is the right way to start right now? Okay, so there's two questions there: future of frameworks and what you should do right now. Uh huh. So let's start with the future one because I love that question. Uh huh. Um, I like to be on the bleeding edge of tech because um, that's like kind of how I am ahead of the game. You know, um, like I try to explore a lot of stuff. Like I've tried everything: Astro, Hono. Um, There's something called Tanstack, which is new. I have tried everything, um, and like my favorite now that I am actually rewriting uh, Super Memory 2 is something called Remix, Ooh. and Remix is beautiful because unlike Next.js, it does not do its own like very complex processing, bundling, code, huge HMR, own Turbo Pack, and stuff like that. It relies on web standards, so all you do is you use the web standard APIs like just HTTP GET request, POST request, POST request forms, stuff like that, and um, you build better websites simply. Terms are that you're already used to, like POST, GET. So you don't need yes. to learn the new terms. Exactly. Yeah. 
it's really good like uh, the code here is actually very simple as well like there's a loader that runs before uh-huh. everything uh, then the function which is a normal function it can, it can get the stuff from the loader and then it can display the stuff from the loader I and see. then there is no like you know there is no flashing of content that happens on normal react websites because it's server rendered in a way but not really server rendered only the data is from the server uh and then action is what happens when you submit the form uh-huh. simple as that so when you submit the form it will do this it will create a project that's literally it so it's really easy uh in next js all this would have a one react server component with an action now then you will need to learn what a react server component is and then next js actions are a whole different topic in itself um but you don't need to learn if you use remix exactly so i like i like sticking to web standards like that and it's not like i hate next js i've been using next js for years now but ne- uh, remix is doing a lot of things right in my opinion the problem with it is the community is extremely small you will have to make your own stuff you know but it's on web standard it's fun like we at super memory built our own auth library on top like uh, because no one had made an auth library at properly. the time like uh, jo abhi aajkal next year pe we saw the zero auth right auth zero auth, auth zero. zero yeah yes. that 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 was in there uh yes nothing nothing is like properly supported in remix the community is pretty small right now but you can use like oauth with google facebook meta right yes but for that you'll have to do your own coding basically uh in next js to do oauth with google you can just use next auth Correct. for example uh-huh. um then there's hono.dev hono so um if i say that next js is a uh, remix is an alternative for next js hono is an alternative for express uh-huh. which is a really popular web framework and i don't think anyone uses anything other than express in today's day and age um hono makes it absolutely amazing to work with apis so um it has like all the batteries included it has custom middleware functions uh, auth middleware everything it is ultra lightweight it is just 8 kilobytes in size and it can run on any runtime it can so cloudflare has its own runtime called workerd it's not javascript it's like their own compiler for javascript runtime it's very interesting so it can run on workerd it can run on node js bun um aws anything and it has a amazing developer experience it's like the developer experience for hono is so unmatched that honestly everyone i know who has been using express today is switching over to hono wow. it's amazing so incredible yeah more people need to know about this it's created by cloudflare's employees so um and there was a very amazing blog about it uh the story of the web framework hono which really explains everything beautifully my favorite like, everything is amazing you, you should definitely read this but one thing i really want to show is the rpc client actually mm-hmm. so what is an rpc client uh you will know very soon actually so uh, okay um so you have a fr- backend already made mm-hmm. and you want to make a request to it using the front end you can literally just do this like um you can make a hono like rpc client which is a remote procedural call client mm-hmm. and then you can do client dot so if i had an api that was like slash v1 slash post you can do client dot and typescript will tell you v1 because the developer experience is that deep like it it literally tells your editor that these routes are available what is v1 no like it's an api route okay over api here. route okay so uh posts and then slash v1 is the base route and oh, then it's the location a, of yes the, it's the location okay got it okay so it will it, it will validate that you are making always making the right request so it validates the url like it is crazy yes so, it's amazing so anything like not just the url the payload as well like it knows that the json is supposed to contain id and title incredible so it's that good so anything that makes developers life easy you should use it yeah i think that is the it future it has full type safety yeah uh, that is the future you're trying to prove us incredible okay so future of frameworks is done. use anything that makes your life easier and it will speed up the process um, now what people should do with the resources right now honestly and all yeah. people should use next js 
people should use next js wait it's contradictory right you just talked about using remix yes <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is for beginners remix can be overwhelming because not everyone knows web standards uh and it takes a while to get your head around web standards so use nextjs there's a huge community they have been making the blog amazing their documentation is amazing their tutorials are amazing use nextjs um it's like saying learn coding and then use like chat gpt cursor ai like use yes. ai tools later first learn coding and, it's like saying that and um, so all these ai tools like uh, v0 the charts and ui library the ai sdk everything will work with remix and nextjs both but they are more deep by default they are better supported in nextjs mm. so that's also one of the reasons awesome so can you share like you pay $5 a month coming back to cloudflare right you for entire super memory if you were not using cloudflare what would have been the challenges what would have been the cost of running super memory with millions 2 million up to 2 million queries happening on it yes so um last month uh lee robinson and guillermo roch invited me to to the virtual office and we had an amazing con- conversation about super memory my other products everything and they were like you should try using vercel i don't think it will be that expensive if it's expensive we will give it to you for free uh-huh. so i went home and i was like let's just calculate how much it would cost uh-huh. so i am doing 25 billion uh, database read write or uh, queries basically. in a year or month uh, in a month in a, a billing cycle 21 days wow. so um that is a lot of course uh-huh. So that also includes network requests and that does not include. So on top of that there's network requests, there's uh, execution time, there's wall time, CPU wall time. I calculated everything and my team which is six people um so Vercel cost for team seats as well. So that would that in itself would be $120 a month. In in total it would be more than $400 a month for me um on Vercel which is like a managed cloud but what about like the non managed clouds aws and stuff um aws charges for egress fees egress is bandwidth in and out ah uh-huh. so even just in the bandwidth costs it's just much more than 15 20 25 or something like that so the cloudflare fun fact about it is that it never charges anything for bandwidth why why cloudflare is so cheap um there's actually uh aws there's actually a, an amazing blog by um matthew prince the ceo of cloudflare uh-huh. about why aws is so expensive oh <laughs> it's crazy because uh, it it charges almost 400 times markup like there's an entire like research um oh 80 times markup like for us canada customers pay 80 times more for europe customers pay 80 times more than um, what amazon pays for the same thing um in south america like it goes all the way down to 3.5 times more in like south korea where oh. aws is the cheapest but then you're paying 3 times 3.5 times more than what cloud uh, what aws is paying to their providers like or to run it basically which is still a lot right like huge profit margin for them they have they have magnitudes of profit margins and they can just do that because they they have been owning the entire internet since a while now true so they can just keep increasing their price and they can take crazy markup um so that's with the hyperscalers so aws google cloud those are called the hyperscalers then comes the uh, the plat- the non platforms mm-hmm. how i would call them non platforms is like netlify versel um stuff like that they do not own the infrastructure they do not own the actual physical hardware right um they but wrap versel is just wrap around aws yeah uh yeah it, they wrap around multiple products like vers versel also right wrap some some stuff around cloudflare actually interestingly um oh. and multiple different products and then they like uh they pay to people who are already you know charging a lot of markup 
so they will charge us extra markup on that insane so like compute is not that expensive it's just that everyone the compute business is really like there's money flowing everywhere i see you know that's why like you know discord was paying billion dollars to cloudflare that's crazy yeah like yeah. um they pay a shit ton of money to cloudflare um, so what optimization cloudflare has done it's not the optimization just just like they're just making it cheaper there are also optimizations like um instead of like that container stuff that everyone else does workload you may mention no yes that's an uh, a new product that's another topic but right. basically usually what people do is like people run containers like digital ocean provides for containers and stuff like that uh-huh. um so there's servers which are like all this entire big thing then there's containers which breaks the server down into small Correct. pieces and then there's isolates so cloudflare like the entire workers architecture everything is built on top of isolates and isolate is an extremely 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 small version um of code required to run a particular thing smallest part of operating system uh you could call it that process, yeah to make isolates work there's a ton of engineering required like in fact i was just talking about this um uh, like they literally had to make their own like javascript runtime um their own everything because like runtime as in like legit runtime you know the thing that runs code they have to make their own thing wow. that's completely compatible one to one with node js so they had to do all these things to make these optimizations and they have done it so Insane. that's good then so that is the level of optimizations plus cost reduction it takes for them to just charge you $5 a month yeah for giving that many services yeah that's the reality okay so that's why people are considering dravya as the brand ambassador of cloudflare that's the I reason mean, he mentioned i'm just no i'm and not really a brand ambassador of cloudflare yet but i am definitely a brand ambassador of don't get like don't get scammed you know like it's simple like don't get scammed um it's not that anyone is scamming you it's just that you always have better options incredible okay so the, this was a journey of creating super memory ai and but how you created super memory ai we already saw the code but why you created super memory ai um okay interesting story so as i mentioned i have been uh, like on the internet since a while and on my ipad i had the pinterest app downloaded mm-hmm. and on the pinterest app i had saved an amazing amazing collection of pins amazing collection and i still remember like i i have i had i was a, an extremely curious guy i had said some random fun facts about random things uh some health like how to improve health how much water to drink all sorts of very weird stuff like there was this entire huge sheet of cheat sheet for learning the korean language and there was very random stuff um but like i over the last 5 6 years i never saw it like i never referenced back to it ever and 7 years later when i actually went back to pinterest to be like okay let's scroll through everything pinterest deleted all my stuff so i was like pissed like i made this amazing collection of like pins um and i would like i would use pinterest as a bookmarking so i would take like thing from outside pinterest and put it in pinterest you know um and it just deleted everything and that's also the reason super memory is open source like if, if i was like a user of like super memory 6 years ago i would save everything to super memory and own the data at the very least like you know um that's that's kind of what i want i want to own the data i want some service that's not only reliable but also helps me make sense of everything that i've saved and um i am a person who tries to keep like social contacts of everyone and um i'm not that social person suitcase sorry yes okay you go ahead now i'm a person who tries to uh like interact with people but i'm not a social person so it also like the plan is that it can listen to the calendar and it can recommend me stuff and all sorts of stuff so that's the reason i made super memory like i i literally need super memory in fact i had this huge brain fog problem like 
I just could not get my brain to think stuff. Uh, I'll show you. <laughs> it's the idea of second brain. Like there's also a book called Second Brain. Like you know when you write things down, take notes about it, and save it somewhere. You live in an abundance mindset. I tell you, like I am a creator, right? You know when I have like notes of even like we attended the conference. I made notes on my notion. Now I give it to Super Memory. and like it has the brain which can help me create ideas create videos of all those learnings together that's right so that's yeah, cool so i had this crazy brain fog like right before i started making super memory uh-huh. um like i don't know why but i could not remember stuff and i had this legit problem of like uh, i don't i don't know why it was like it, probably because i was coding all day i don't know but then like people recommended me all sorts of stuff right like all sorts of stuff a lot of stuff and then i was like how do i even make sense of these recommendations mm. with like uh, so i made super memory and i made super memory take twitter threads and so it could take that entire thread of the all the responses everything and then i can ask it like what have people said like give me in five points So that's what I did, and now I don't have brain fog. I think so, which is good. But you are dependent on the APIs. Like, can I ask you? Like, let's say at the time when you were building it, Mem Zero did not exist. But when Mem Zero came, your journey became easier. Um, right? Am I, am I right or not? So I, I am using Mem Zero as like an additional layer. I don't really need it, but it makes my product better. I see. Like, if if the Mem Zero APIs fail, nothing will happen. Uh, I'll be fine, which is interesting. Oh. So uh, I have like a lot of um, all like a lot of places where even if it completely stops working, it will like either restart or do something or or literally just keep bugging us like in five a.m. at the night and I've fixed it in the, on the spot. So um, how with Mem Zero? Like I could you will need a database to store the memory, right? If yes. If you don't have Mem Zero. So all the memories are stored in something called a vector database. Uh-huh. That's our own. Uh, we own the vector database ourselves, and the memories are small snippets out of that data that Mem Zero automatically extracts and stores it to their database. I see. So that's how that works. So you would have to do that manually if Mem Mem Zero was yes. there. Yes. Yes. Okay. And um, I was actually Mem Zero was previously called Embed Chain. Yes. And I was one of the like early. Adopters and early contributors for embedchain. Yeah, I see. So you're the biggest contributor, right? One of the biggest. I was not the biggest, but I was probably the most enthusiastic. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and Taranjit became a great friend, like, amazing friend. Like every time in SF, I'm I hang out with him. He's an amazing guy. So I was also like, Mem Zero is like they are building some cool stuff. I really want to use this in my product. So amazing. Okay, now let's get. Uh, I think. Uh, are you think? Hamne. Indie hacking, sorry, complete curly. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, now let's get into paying tuition fees in the US. There are so many ways. Like there is Z fellowship, there is Thiel for fellowship. There could be more. Can you share the ways young people are getting into it and the future of college degree? So there are two parts. Um. Okay. So how to pay for college funding uh-huh. is kind of hard. So Thiel fellowship gives you a shit ton of money, but they'll ask you to drop out. That's the entire deal, you know. Take a shit ton of money, drop out, build your own thing. Z Fellows is like a one week program where you get ten thousand dollars and you have to give up, I think, one or two percent of the company to them. No, it's like one or two percent of something you build over the next six years or something like that. And Z is so, for Gen Zs, by the way. Ah, <laughs> huh, it's very interesting. Yeah. Um, and you, be, it's a very interesting community. You get like. Access to a very amazing group of good people, and then there's also something called Neo Scholars, uh, Neo dot com. Uh-huh. Um, I feel like Neo Neo Scholars is the best for teenagers like me. Uh-huh. So I think um, they don't give money on the spot. It's really hard to get in. Only three hundred Neo Scholars, um, and only so only three hundred Neo Scholar finalists, which is the group that gets everything, all the benefits. And then only thirty new scholars in the entire world, um, and those thirty people are obviously extremely, uh, extremely good. Uh, they are the best CS students of United States. 
we actually met one of them right now which yeah. is crazy. crazy so um everyone is from stanford harvard and he's the only guy from university of virginia um so and new scholars has this thing like where um you can get internships at startups and really have high paying uh, internships and i think internships are a great thing and you pay your tuition fee and they get some percentage of your startup yes so um no they don't get anything from the startup new scholars does not take anything okay Nothing. it just gives you environment to build it it gives you access to amazing people it gives you access to join any startup you want including open ai and uh, wop and any huge company they have this internal job portal for startups um, um and only you can apply to those jobs and you'll only you can get into those jobs incredible um and o- over 300 people and about 50 to 80 companies to get in everyone can get an internship basically so new is absolutely amazing i think um they also give grants out and stuff like that so i myself um internships selling like a past product and uh, of course like my all the grants i've got so far that's been a really good thing uh, like yesterday i got another one from versel uh-huh. so that was fun um and that's it so that's kind of enough to like pay for your tuition any any fellowship you got into i am into new like that's you a fellowship did. okay uh, and i'm uh, it's an actually an amazing one uh-huh. um in college i'm in this entrepreneurship fellowship uh-huh. which is also good um at asu like asu has this entire innovation and entrepreneurship thing it's called eni entrepreneurship plus innovation so i'm an eni fellow and that reduces your uh, tuition fee from like $40,000 per year to um so funny thing about asu yes so mine is like 10,000 right now so 40 to 10 they made it ah uh, yeah but like everyone gets it down to 15 Okay. Uh every good student at least gets it in down a year. to 15 in a semester okay. and I only pay like 10 uh 15 20 a year. So that's it. Okay. So and that no- includes like housing and most things. So. Got it. So like normal tuition fee is $20,000 a semester. He pays 10,000 thanks to that scholarship ERG scholarship. And after that this amount he is able to pay because of the neo fellowship you got into uh, plus the funding and internships internship, and internships yes so i mean of course fellowship is some amount but internships and everything combined yes. you have been able to oh i i have forgot to mention i worked at cloudflare for like i worked in the cloudflare ai team first semester right um, first, first summer was, semester i made a video about it on my instagram go check my instagram out um there's like an entire story there um so that was very fun um i won build space grant i won like another grant by highlight uh, which is an ai company um versel gave me some money and some angel like some just supporters like startup founders who have raised us a lot of money they give some money wow so my final question will be to reach this point who have been your biggest inspirations a lot of people mention you know uh like P- peter levels and we mentioned all those people tell tell us your personal close to your heart mentors or inspirations um for me some amazing inspirations honestly it is elon musk ah. um elon musk sam altman two amazing founders i know because i genuinely think that elon musk does things with the only intention of how do i take humanity forward because no normal person would just wake up and decide i'll make an electric car company or i'll send rockets to space and i'll land them back and catch them with two megazilla arms because i want to do it like no one will ever do that and no one will be like i'll launch the most number of satellites any company has ever done in the entire history of humanity and 10 times 40 times more than that because uh, he because i want to make internet accessible So you know like he just does things and he's a he might not be like an amazing guy to be with <laughs> I don't know that but he's definitely a great founder with a great vision for the future Absolutely The second person is um like of course Sam Altman I respect him because like um 
obvious reasons he made an inference company from a research lab um and he's like generally thinking about problems he made worldcoin which i am really passionate about so stuff like that and uh, one more person that i want to mention is shashank dikshit he's just a guy from kanpur you know like now he's like a billionaire um i think he's worth definitely billions or at least m- multiple 100 millions uh he's an extremely normal guy who started a boring business uh, an erp platform and he made his life very good like that like he lives next to the like he lives in one of the best places in new york like wow. the best places in new york so amazing guy to be with as well um very humble he started the india accelerate movement in ac ah. so i need to show this so inac.dhr.wtf has a indian in accelerate india manifesto uh, and it's it has like a lot of points in preamble of how us as indians can grow india which is cool so so inspiring yeah he is a great guy like great guy absolutely thank you so so much dhavya there are so many opportunities for students right now coming in i think you know college is good or not it's highly debatable but what is most important to take away from this podcast is just go out build with the technologies which are easiest for you right now and just ship it as soon as possible i agree thank you so much yes. again yeah. it was so nice meeting you